what's going on ladies and gentlemen welcome to the channel this is the rth podcast man i'm your host nephew and i'm checking in man so basically the ultimate test at 154 um which is basically the home of jermel charlo where he reigns supreme uh will be um showcased between the next two biggest stars in that division um, between Brian Mendoza and Tim Zhu. Now, this isn't an official fight, but it is definitely the fight that the fight fans want to see. And uh, if this fight were to be signed, sealed, and delivered, I'm pretty sure everybody will have their eyes glued to a screen because both of these gentlemen are dangerous, to say the least. Now, both gentlemen right now are interim championship title holders. Tim Zhu... Uh, who is the WBO interim champion will be elevated to WBO full champion uh, on September the 30th uh, which was supposed to be his official fight date um, for those who have been saying that he should not take the belt and and all of this extra nonsense they've been saying that was Tim Zhu versus Jamel Charlo's fight date alright so, of course, he should be elevated to world champion if Jamel Charlo shows up to the ring and fights somebody else. All right. Uh, saying that to say uh, he definitely deserves getting that WBO championship goal. And it puts Charlo in a situation where um, if he wanted to be considered undisputed, he would either have to beat um, Canelo Alvarez at 168 or he would have to come back down to 154 and see the likes of Tim Zhu to get the WBO championship goal back. All right, but saying that to say, man, Brian Mendoza is also in a great position, um, holding the WBC championship goal and dethroning by far the guy everyone assumed would be the next gentleman in line in the 154 division and Sebastian Fondor to take that WBC interim title away from by far the tallest gentleman who was pretty much a wrecking machine for a little while. Um, Brian Mendoza, in my opinion, had a great outing. He shocked the world that night when he knocked out uh, Sebastian Fondor and could do it again if he were to sign the contract to see Tim Zhu. It's one of those scenarios where both of these guys are dangerous in every aspect of the way, um, to say the least. Now, Brian Mendoza does have uh, dibs on Jamel Charlo as well while he holds the interim championship goal at the WBC level. But here is the scenario, right? Um, Brian Mendoza will not be elevated to WBC um, full champion uh, when Jamel Charlo sees Canelo Alvarez because he first just received the belt. And secondly, Tim Zhu has been in line a little bit longer, okay? So I don't want you guys to look at this as they're both going to be elevated because it's not the truth. Only one will be elevated. But if they were to have this particular scenario, this would be crazy, right? If this fight were to go down between Tim Zhu and Brian Mendoza, this would be crazy because it would technically be unification and term championship title fight, right? Um, well, to a certain degree, um, if Mendoza and uh, Tim Zhu were to see each other slightly uh, after um, Charlo and Canelo, uh, Brian Mendoza would technically be fighting Tim Zhu for the WBO World Championship title. But uh, Tim Zhu would be fighting Brian Mendoza for his WBC interim championship title. If Tim Zhu win, he would hold two championship belts, guys. Two that uh, will put him at, at the highest front runner for Jamel Charlo in the Undisputed Championship title match. Um, but if Brian Mendoza was to beat Tim Zhu, again, it'll put him at the highest pinnacle and he will be considered real world or uh, WBO world champion because he will take that belt from Tim Zhu. So this is the opportunity of a lifetime, man, for both of these gentlemen to step into the ring. Um, Tim Zhu right now, in my opinion, is fighter of the year. I know we, we, can, we can talk about Terrence Crawford beating Errol Spence, but that's just one guy. We could talk about uh, um, Javante Tank Davis, who has uh, two knockouts this year. Uh, so does Tim Zhu. And if Tim Zhu were to land this Brian Mendoza fight, it would be the icing on the cake. He was supposed to have Jamel Charlo September the 30th, but that doesn't happen. But to get Brian Mendoza is the next best thing. 
All right, to get him in the ring after coming off the biggest knockout of his career versus Sebastian Fondora, to see him center stage in the 154 division, especially if he were to win it by knockout, I think Tim Zhu would be unanimously placed as the number one uh, fighter of the year this year. And I know you guys are going to say, no, it's Terrence Crawford. I get it. I understand that he beat Errol Spence. That's just one fighter, bro, on the, the year. And you have to think about a guy who's fought three gentlemen this year and knocked all three of them out in Tim Zhu if he were to knock out Brian Mendoza. Now, if Brian Mendoza were to win this fight, especially by knockout, that would be two knockouts. But it would also put Brian Mendoza, in my opinion, as a top runner for fighter of the year if he were to knock out Tim Zhu because he knocks out Tim Zhu, right, which is possibly the boogeyman at 154, but he will also have knocked out uh, Sebastian Fondora, who was also kind of like the boogeyman at 154. Y'all get what I'm saying? So technically, he would probably be considered fighter of the year. I know it's not attractive, right? Um, but it, it, would, it would still be fact. Uh, Brian Mendoza would be fighter of the year, in my opinion, right? Um, because his two knockout wins would be a lot bigger in superstardom than what Tank Davis did um, to start the year off. Uh, Hector Luis Garcia... Um, not the biggest and baddest guy. I'm not gonna say he's a bad fighter. I'm not. I'm not taking nothing away from Hector, but just not the biggest name for uh, the likes of a Tank Davis fight. When you have guys like Shakur Stevenson, Frank Martin, Devin Haney, to name a few, he could have tried to fight. And eh, um, he 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 just doesn't level up. But when you're thinking about uh, Ryan Garcia, that is a legitimate name where we could say, okay, well he knocked out Ryan, but that would only put him at one guy for the year. So, Brian Mendoza technically knocking out the likes of Sebastian Fondora and Tim Zhu. That will put him as high as it goes. Even though it's not three fights like what Tim Zhu has accomplished, it will still be as high as it goes. Because uh, Tim Zhu have already knocked out Tony Harrison and uh, Carlos Ocampo this year. So, to knock out Brian Mendoza would be crazy. But to be knocked out by Brian Mendoza would also be crazy. So uh, this is just uh, my take on this particular scenario. Got to ask you guys before we get out of here, who do you guys see winning this showdown if it were to go down? Again, it's, it's not official, guys. It's not official, but it's one that the fight fans want to see, especially those who are uh, adamant fans of the junior middleweight division uh, where Jamel Charlo reigns supreme at right now. Uh, we've been waiting to see Tim Zoo versus Jamel for a long time. Uh, we, we thought that Sebastian Fondora was technically the next best thing to Tim Zhu, and uh, that was proven to be uh, untrue. Brian Mendoza right now holds that particular scenario. Now, this is a situation where he don't have to take this fight, bro, with Tim Zhu. I just think that Tim Zhu is crazy for giving all of these gentlemen an opportunity to see him whenever it's necessary. But it also goes to show you how much he believes in himself and how good he really feels that he is. When he's taking on all of these tasks, no matter who the guy is across the ring, giving him a shot at his WBO championship goal, uh, staying firm at 154 as technically the king, in my opinion, because he's the only guy at the top of the hill that's fighting, and uh, giving Brian Mendoza a shot to become WBO uh, world champion as soon as he gets the belts. That's crazy because he would only have it for maybe about a month month and a half and uh usually when you win the belt you're supposed to go on vacation and go see the world and you know go to disneyland and the whole nine but tim zoo is like now nah, i'm ready to get into the ring and then to go up against a tough and gritty opponent who's coming off the biggest ko of his life like brian mendoza bro that's just even crazier uh bro tim zoo is definitely the fighter of the year in my opinion especially if he, he lands this dub but again brian don't have to take this fight man he can just sit as uh the wbc end time champion take an easy route kind of fight and uh wait until uh tim zoo and uh, jamel charlo go through whatever they got to go through and uh maybe you know um try to wait and see whatever happens with them and then try to get his next shot at jamel charlo or tim zoo whoever wins not to mention though he might be pushed back slightly because uh i'm pretty sure after tim zoo and jamel charlo They'll probably be taking the undisputed crown to go see the likes of Terrence Crawford 
or Errol Spence, depending on who wins the rematch, if the rematch happens at all, okay? But this is the RTH Podcast. I'm your host, Nephew, and I'm signing. Now y'all leave your comments in the comment section below. Uh, to the uh, Australian fans who are big Tim Zoo supporters, and those of you who just every time I put a video up about Jamel Charlo, you want to flood my comment section with Tim Zoo comments, this is the perfect place to do it right here on this video um, because we're talking directly about Tim Zoo. I just want to leave the Jamel Charlo scenario um, and Canelo Alvarez scenario alone because it's technically the biggest fight we've ever had. Uh, in men boxing uh, as far as undisputed versus undisputed and I don't want to have that comment section um, be little no offense to Tim Zhu or Australian fans I don't want to have that comment section be little um, by Tim Zhu floodgates all day all night all day all night Tim Zhu has videos on my channel on my platform and you guys can come over here on videos like these where it's his video and uh, you can show your love and your support for Tim Zoo here. And I have no problem with it, bro. But Jamel Charlo deserves his own lane to do what he does uh, in the sport of boxing. So if you guys could leave the Canelo video alone and come here and talk about Jamel, I'm with that. And anytime I make a video that has both Tim Zoo and Jamel Charlo on the screen, then you guys could go crazy on Jamel Charlo as much as you want. And anything else you want to say about him, just keep it on the Tim Zoo videos at least until September the thirtieth, and then we can get back to talking about Jamel Charlo and Tim Zoo all over again. All right, but this is RTH Podcast. I'm your host nephew, and I'm signing out. Hope you guys can respect what I just told you guys. Uh, I'll talk to you guys on the next one, man. Y'all take it easy, bruh. Peace. RTH Podcast going live, man, with Brawl Night Champions for members only. Party chat debate for a shot at the Community Board Champion, but remember, it's a fight, so don't get knocked out and lose your place in the ranks. Or if you're just here to be a part of the spectacle, that's cool too. Sign up for the first tier to get front row seats to each event and get exclusive content not seen on YouTube. No my tier, but don't get kicked out. See rule books for more details. Oh yeah, ladies and the legends are included if you want to spectate or go for some gold. Brawl Night Champions, sign up now.